I uh, wanna wanna welcome you to the show. Uh, this is gonna be show twenty one on how to make five hundred bucks a month with real estate with two Fang. He's gonna show us how to make money, uh, how yeah. he's cash flowing on his. I mean, how how old is this deal? How old? Yeah. Uh, I think almost maybe like a year. Then a half. A year. Now. Yeah. Okay. A year. Yeah. So you had a, like you, you had it for yeah. a while already. So yeah. All right, so uh, I want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for coming on the show, um, and just you know, just sharing what you what you know or what you know what this deal is about, and hopefully it might help others. I know you. I know I'm a big real estate guy, and you are too. So uh, hopefully, if you guys got any real estate questions, um, you know this is our this is our niche, right? Yeah. So uh, we just want to show you how how exciting this is, you know, and and hopefully you guys catch the real estate bug like we do. Uh, those of you guys uh, haven't or are not in our real estate group, it's called the Hmong Real Estate Investors Group uh, in Facebook. So you go to Facebook, just type in uh, Hmong Real Estate Investors. Uh, we're in there. Uh, you can join and we'll add you on there. And then uh, that's all we talk about is real estate. Yeah. Bunch of great guys, uh, guys with great attitudes, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're always willing to uh, share knowledge in there. So, um, two, um, hey, man, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, man. <laughs> I've, I've been I've been following you and looking at, at watching all your shows like for the past like two three years. So <laughs> glad, glad I finally made it on. So thanks for having me. <laughs> all right, I've been hounding you, bro. I've been hounding you to get on. That's me. I, I know you got caught up in a bunch of stuff too, you know, because I know you do your own show too, which is cool, yeah. man. I mean, your yeah. show is pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, but uh, yeah. I mean, let's just talk about you for now, right? So, yeah. um. Dude, I mean, tell us what you're doing now, right? Like, you have a job? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, a little bit about myself. Uh, again, thanks, Tri, for having us, uh, uh, having me on. Yeah. I'm, I'm so used to having us because you know, <laughs> I, I have a few people that that work with, works with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, thanks for having me on. Uh, the uh, let me see, where did I start? Uh. Yeah, like uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm I'm a real estate guy mainly. Um. And you know, I, I kind of started about like uh, almost four years ago. Uh, I've been meaning to start like fourteen years ago, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slow. I'm, I'm slow, so it took yeah. me a long time uh, to get started. But I've been meaning to start like right after I graduated from college. But you know, things happened and all that stuff. So, anyways, uh, I finally you know started four years ago, and you know, ever since that, I've been you know just. Kind of educated myself meeting all you guys like chai and a bunch of the other Hmong real estate investors out there so uh yeah that's that's kind of how i got into the game cool so yeah. um i mean let's give that guy a shout out right so i, yeah. I mean I, I know i listened to one of your show before and you know uh that that someone got you into this bug you know oh yeah yeah so um yeah, and you came on my show twice, so thanks for doing that. And you gave <laughs> a lot of info and, and things, so uh, thanks a lot for doing that. Um, yeah, so my uh, my cousin, well, he's like my mentor and my cousin, brother, and stuff like that, Zach Fang. Um, you know, he was always someone that I look up to, and, mm -hmm. you know, he's been doing real estate for a long time. And uh, even when I was in high school and college, you know, I knew that, like, like he was an interesting character, interesting guy because he didn't. I don't think he graduated from high school, but uh, essentially he left the family, the clan, the Fang family. He left and he went to like Rhode Island. So I, I, I always thought he was an interesting guy. So, uh, anyways, he was doing real estate. I was asking him a lot of real estate questions and things like that. Uh, and then he kind of like coached me that I should get into it. And this was like fourteen years ago. So I was like, yes, I'll do it you know um and then i just never got to it but finally you know i i finally sat back down with him and said hey you know i i think i'm ready now after 10 years and let's do this thing so he's been helping helping me a lot yeah. okay well explain like what was the turning point and you know you just kind of like you know you were seeing people making money or i mean what what made you go after that many years you go okay it's time like Oh, the turning point. I think. I think it's. Um, well, the main turning point is that I got married. 
<laughs> but <laughs> but before that, it was kind of like uh, you know I always you know I always see people doing good in real estate, right? And then I always say I'll do it. I did try a few things, you know, like uh, you know after I talked to him, then I finally read like Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That kind of that's not a strictly real estate book, but that kind of gives you that mindset uh, change, a uh, shift. And then I was like, I was, uh, you know, I could, I need to get out of my job and, you know, do real estate, work for myself, da, 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 all that stuff, which is, which might not be, uh, I don't guarantee, I, I don't recommend that either. Uh, and, and I'll let you know why in a little bit. But um, y- yeah, the, so I, I tried this, that, this, that, and then it just never worked. So, okay. yeah, and then I think it's because I'm, I'm still single. Uh, the main thing was that I just graduated from uh, college, and then I have, like, a decent paying job. I'm in the IT field. So it's a decent paying job. Me and my friends were, like, that, multi, that multi-millionaire that goes out all to the nice clubs and lounge and Sky Lounge and stuff, but yeah. we'll – we only make like 50k a year but we, we live like we're millionaires yeah and so i was I, I made some money but i was never able to save money and i was like oh i'll make the money in real estate oh i'll, I'll save the money and then i'll make the money in real estate and then yeah. that i just trickled down to like 10 years until until i got married and then i'm like okay shoot now i i like it, that 10 year went by super fast and so uh well eight years went by super fast and then um you know i was living that lifestyle where like i was like uh traveling with friends and you know like doing all that stuff when you're young and so finally when i got married i was like oh i I need to uh now really start like if i don't do it now then i'm gonna waste another like eight to ten years yeah so that's when i reached back out to zach that's when i reached out to a, a couple of the people that are in the real estate space uh, like my brothers and all of them. And that's when I finally make the shift. Like, oh, I can't do it in San Diego because it's super expensive. So I need to, like, I can't stay in San Diego. I, I need to change to a new location. And, um, you know, that's when I have families here in Minnesota. So that's when I come up here. And then I've just been hitting hard in real estate ever since. Wow. And, and that's what, I mean, that's why I heard, like, when you, when you were kind of your, one of your interviews, that yeah you made the change you I mean you moved you know yeah. just to to make it you know so that's I mean kudos to you like i think it was uh you were interviewing yeah right so yeah yeah and then yeah. you you made that move to make it happen um but so so to justify it it's just you got married and then it wasn't the wife right it was just like you kind of just grew up say hey i need to do it now right yeah i was lucky where but it took me a while to find my wife too, right? So I was lucky in the sense that my wife's really like, like business minded and entrepreneur mindset because yeah. she have her own like clothing design and stuff. So let's give her a shout out because because I think she does all oh. that stuff behind you, right? Oh, oh, like like this. You can see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're sharing the same office. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so give her. Let's give a shout out. She does. He have like a page or anything like that where. Yeah, it's called uh, Nelly Designs, uh-huh. and so uh, Drew knows this. Uh, but uh, maybe later we'll put it in the notes What's, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if, if you have like, if you have a page, uh, give it to me yeah. later. We'll tag it on the page. I think she sells like like just Hmong clothes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Hmong clothes. She designed her own too. Uh, Hmong and Lao clothes, and she's yeah. trying to modernize the clothes. So like what Drew is doing, um, and uh, from Jamo, and, and yeah, so yeah, she does all that stuff. I used to do all the Facebook and marketing and all the shop sh- online shop setup for her and yeah. stuff like that. So that's um, cool, man. To find like a partner that has like an entre- entrepreneur mindset, that's hard, yeah. you know. So yeah. like, kudos to you for finding her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> her finding you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was, I was, I say I was pretty lucky in that sense. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. So, so you got married and then yeah. bam, you, you figured that was the right time to start real estate. So, I mean, that was, um, this deal well, was, was last year. What was your first yeah, deal? I mean, did you have a first deal? Like, yeah, I have first deal. Well, uh-huh. was, it, was it like a crash your burn deal or is it, do you still have uh, that deal or? Yeah, I still have the deal. So before I get to that deal, 
uh, it wasn't the right, it might not have been the right time to start because w- right when I got started, the market was like getting really hot. Gotcha. Like the first yeah. year that I moved up here, it was still kind of like, uh, you know, cool. Mm-hmm. And then like a year after that, like the market jumped. And so after my first deal, it was, I mean, uh, you know, so it might not have been the best time to start, but it's, you know, you use, because like if I were to start in 2008, I look back, right? When I, if I were to start in 2008, it would have been like, that would have been the perfect time to start, right? Because that's where I graduated. And, I, <laughs> and so if I were to start that, I think uh, it'll be different now, but you know, you, you, you have to start somewhere. Um, but yeah, my first deal, I didn't really have any money mm-hmm. because I used all my money. I spent too much. You know, <laughs> it's the it's the sky lounges that took all my money. Sky lounge, yeah. So you're yeah. So I'm uh, partying, right? If they're yeah, partying, I'm partying like the nice like uh, vacations and with yeah. friends, and, you know, yeah. um, and stuff like that. Like I'm not going to like expensive places, but it's just like that experience that us friends, like uh, my friends in San Diego. I love you guys, but I needed to to be away, so. Um, that networking you were networking right yeah yeah, the yeah. Wrong, wrong, wrong type of networking <laughs> <laughs> it's still networking yeah yeah so, yeah. So, yeah, so, so, yeah the first deal so i didn't have any money when i moved here to minnesota uh yeah. and i think my wife has more money than me and she's not even like working a full-time job and so uh when we moved here both of us don't have jobs but i was still working remotely uh, uh in my it job and um i went to stay with my brother my older brother um and uh you know with my wife and it's just the two of them so because they're a lot older and then he didn't ask me to pay anything so i just saved all the money that i make um because he's like yeah if you're gonna start your life he, he does real estate too yeah so like, if you're gonna start your life you need to save all your money and then we could find you a deal and you know he wanted me to find a duplex basically he wants me to house hack because that's how he did it too okay yeah so he explained that whole process to me and then at that time i found bigger pockets and then i was like oh that's exactly what the bigger pockets guys are talking about house hacking yeah so yeah and so my first property i still didn't have money when i moved over here my job got cut uh because i'm working remotely like i'm only working like 30 percent oh no no uh, like 70 percent so it's not a full-time job anymore so it was hard for me to get a loan so then we save save stay for like five months i think we got like five thousand and then i kept searching for deals and i the deal that i wanted to do was a lease option deal because i know i couldn't buy it yet but i know that i will be able to buy it so i finally found a lease option deal a fourplex and i didn't have any money either so that fourplex i only put five thousand dollars down this is your first deal yeah first deal okay so yeah. so to summarize you're tar- you're working on doing a house hack right yeah from the beginning and yep. can you explain what house hack is so you know we have like kind of you know yeah probably yeah, we might have a few beginners here what's what what is a house hack first yeah so house hack is a term that uh people have been doing it for a long time but it was a term coined by Uh, the bigger pockets guy like Brandon turner i think he coined it but basically you buy maybe like uh you could do a single family too but uh let's say you buy like a one two or three uh, unit so a duplex triplex or fourplex and you could buy that with a regular residential loan so you could buy as low as like 3.5 percent with the fha loan right and so if you buy it then you live in one unit so in my case um you know i i i did a lease option uh, or well, i guess i shouldn't say that yet but in my case it was a fourplex and then i live in one unit i rent the other units out and you know with uh, so that's house hacking and with that the other uh, three units already paid the the mortgage uh pretty much for me so i pretty much live rent free and actually that project uh, that first deal i actually made like 200 dollars a month damn and living for free living for free so i'm not paying rent that that's what my brother explained to me about house hacking like wait but they, so did you actually get the house or that wasn't the first deal right yeah that's the first deal that was the first deal you actually did a house hack on your first deal 
yeah, house hack, but I couldn't buy it, so it was a lease option. Oh, okay. So, option, all right. So, I house hacked. I house hacked the lease option. Okay, so I okay, I must understand it. So you went in there knowing to do a house hack, yeah. uh, but but I couldn't buy it. Didn't have the money, right? Yeah, I have the money. I I I have like five k. I didn't have the money, and I didn't have the job credit yet because I I dropped uh, to seventy percent. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I I'm not working full time, so it was hard for me to get a loan. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then, how did you get the idea of doing a lease option? Was it through your your mentor, your your awesome cousin, or? Uh, I talked to him a little bit about it too. <laughs> I talked to Zach about it, and I researched. Yeah. Uh, honestly, after I talked to Zach, he kind of sparked the ideas in like a lot of creative ways to do deals. Yeah. And then, um, what I did was I read Brandon Turner's book, uh, "Little No Money Down." Yeah. And I read it, uh, and I listened to that thing like probably like twenty times. I I'm slow, so no, like, dude, you did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? Okay, what you're trying to say? Okay, so I haven't done it yet because yeah, you know, to get that book, uh, you're, I, I don't know, you can either buy the book, yeah. or um, you can become a a, a bigger pockets pro on their site. Um, so bigger pockets is actually like a like an a, like a kind of like an investment like a real estate investment uh, website full of knowledge. So uh, you can subscribe to be one of their users um, by paying subscription fee. And then in, in there, there's you know there's tons of stuff that's that's free for members and stuff like that. But there's also free stuff. Um, well, it's free stuff for you know just anybody. It's a, a lot of free stuff, but with pro members, you get some perks. And right. Stuff. But the that book, book is. That book, not, that book, not, yeah, that book's not free. Uh, you have to buy it's like uh, fifteen bucks or something. But if you just go to YouTube because it's an older book, uh, and you just search, <laughs> yeah, they, they upload it. <laughs> they so just go oh it's man, we're gonna get killed. Bigger Pockets gonna call us up and say, "Hey man, don't be doing." Uh, I think I think Brandon makes too much money, so he doesn't care. <laughs> that's that's like his first like few books. So okay. he has a bunch of other books already. So I don't think. Yeah. I don't think Brandon's gonna. <laughs> so, quick tip. Yeah. <laughs> quick tip. Go to YouTube, type "Little No Money" down by Brandon Turner, and it's on there. Listen to it. I listened to it twenty times. Okay. And so that's, so that's when that's when I I started to understand that um, you 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 don't use one you you could use more than one strategy together. Yeah. So that's when I was like, I need to house hack, but I have no money, so I'm gonna do a lease option. And house hack, yeah. Okay, so so explain what so we we know what the term house hack is, right? So then a lease option is what is it again? Okay, so a lease option is uh, I think most people know as rent to own. So uh, the deal that we're gonna talk about is a rent to own too. So uh, um, maybe I'll get more into details on that. But it's essentially a rent to own. So you you uh, you know you you do a contract maybe three to five years whatever it is. That's your lease contract. So that's the first part of the, the uh, lease option. And then the option part is that you have the option to buy. So it's, it's basically two contracts. Uh, one is the regular lease, like your regular lease that you usually do when you rent a house, you know, just a rental agreement. But most rental agreements are like a year, right? Mm -hmm. But this one, you're gonna do a rental agreement for longer, like maybe three years, five years, 10 years, whatever you and the owner agreed on. So you do that rental agreement, and then the second part is that you you as the renter now has the option to purchase that that house or that property at a price that you two already agreed on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that's all. So so that's why it's a lease and then an option. Okay. So, bam, that option came up. I mean, how long was that option? I mean, uh, I did a three year three okay. year contract. Yeah. Did you did you? fulfilled it already or is it like yeah uh, so you did you wait out the whole term or no uh, just like a year and a half a okay year. And then I, I i saved a little money i actually did a two or three k loan on that <laughs> so, <laughs> you're making it more complicated <laughs> but, but still i mean that's just, this is still your first deal right yeah 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 so guys i mean it's real estate seems hard but it's not and uh, once you start learning these strategies like like what two saying here uh i mean he's a little bit more advanced uh i mean he went in it really deep 
But um, once you start learning these strategies, you just kind of layer and get to what you want, right? And that's kind of where you're going, yep. right? So, so quickly, like the, uh, I mean, this could be a show on its own, but the two or three K, I did a two or three K loan. I did, so uh, the property is fixed now, okay? It, I mean, it's updated. And so I get like market rent now. So uh, I'm actually- Wait, I'm so explain, what, explain what 203 loan is oh, for- okay. it, it could be its own too, but yeah. the 203K loan is just a rehab loan. So it's part oh. of the FHA, the uh, FHA, the Federal Housing Administration loan. That is usually, uh, it's not really first time home buyer, but most first time home buyers use it. You can only have one loan on your uh, record at one time. So, um, anyways, but that's the FHA loan, three and a half percent down. But you, the two or three component to that is that you could borrow a certain amount. You know, uh, you could borrow the rehab amount. Yeah. So the fourplex, I know that it needed to be updated uh, uh, because it's way under rent, and yeah. so. Uh, I knew it needed to be updated, so I borrowed about forty thousand dollars to update it, and so all the units are updated now. Got and it. so you bundle all that together, and then you still just pay three and a half percent down on the entire loan, the purchase loan and the rehab loan, all together. So, so guys, I mean, guys, this is complicated. Uh, ask questions. You know, we got him right now. He's. I mean, this is this isn't even not the deal that we're talking about, right? That we're yeah. gonna talk about. This is just his first deal. But if you got any questions with this, comment below and we'll answer it, you know. But uh, I mean, this is how us real estate guys would think, you know. Yeah. Uh, if we want something, we go after it, and there's multiple strategies on how to get to, you know, to buy something. Yep. So he's he's already using three strategies right now. Is there is there a fourth strategy? <laughs> yeah, I think it's let's see, lease option, house <laughs> pack, uh, two or three, three. Three strategy. Did yeah. you bury yeah, did you bury this one? No, because the three and a half percent right. down was really good finance already. So we're okay. not gonna refinance. Uh I wanted to take some equity out, but um uh I'd probably do a portfolio equity. Uh, I'm probably gonna bundle this as a uh uh line of credit with a couple of other properties later. Okay. So so um man so i'm losing yeah. my train so uh what was before the 203 uh lease option you yeah, did lease the lease option, option. Yeah. so you, lease option you actually got chance to buy the house right yeah and you yeah, did yeah, two three it. uh loan on it right yeah, to rehab yeah. it yeah. right and then what was the third one the oh no i'm just saying like uh it was three strategy because it was a lease option and then a house hacked it Oh yeah, how then I purchased it with a two or three rehab loan. Yeah, two or three K rehab loan. Yeah, yeah. So right yeah. now, I mean, I don't know if you're living. You still, you're not living in it right now, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm still living in there because, like, I didn't want to move that much. But uh, this month, we're gonna move to the new property. Okay. So single family house that you know, um, we didn't. I, we had a few single families before, but we didn't move. And yeah. so finally, now I'm like. Yeah, uh, we need more space, so we're gonna live in one of the single family. Okay, so uh, just so so Chang has a quick question. So he goes um, on this particular topic. Uh, so he goes, "Can I still has house hack if I already have two single family houses? Um, Want to keep both single family home and house hack a two to four plex?" Um, if you don't have an FHA loan, then you can still do it. Okay, so. If, if one of your properties is FHA, maybe refi out of that, and then you could house hack. Yeah. Uh, uh, you could buy two to four uh, fourplex with minimal, maybe like three to five percent down, because that's that's what you want to do uh, to to lower your down payment. Um, but if you don't do that, then you could still house hack. It's just gonna be twenty percent, fifteen to twenty percent down. Yeah. yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Good question. Let us know if you guys got questions. Let us know where you guys are at. I mean, you got a few people on, on the on the on the on the cast here. Uh, right now, I think we saw Wisconsin's leading. You know, yeah. more people in Wisconsin are still up at this time of night. So yeah. <laughs> we got we got to go invest over there. <laughs> I think you're talking to a Wisconsin investor later, right? I mean, yeah, Wisconsin's Wisconsin's a fighter, man. What did they do? They they fought the the stay stay at home order. Yeah, it something was, like that. And yeah. one. 
All right, so so uh, those of you guys, let us know where you're from. Uh, right now, we, we have a huge following people at Wisconsin. Uh, two's from Minnesota, so he wants he wants all the Minnesota to give him a shout out. So yeah, yeah all the Minnesota know, guys. You know, yeah. just just type in MN or or any city in Minnesota, and he wants to know. He at least wants a shout out from those guys. Um, but uh, so we're gonna talk about one of your deals here about you know how how you profit you know made five hundred bucks and we're gonna talk about you know infinite return right you guys yeah. anybody know what infinite returns are like it's it's a statement that I learned like probably like probably like three years ago I never heard of infinite return and to me it just sounds like what is it I mean it's just like a it's, it's weird you know, infinite if you really think the word infinite return that's kind of like what it is but. Um, um yeah. yeah we got a well there's a shout out right okay. we got Jenny Yang or man yeah oh, is, that, is that a city in minnesota <laughs> <laughs> man well i think she just corrected it oh, okay oh there you go yeah she did say man uh, and then and yeah. then uh fresno chang says he's from fresno and, uh, and uh, you got your minnesota people stepping up man that's yeah. awesome there you go um, also minnesota so infinite return i mean that's that's a powerful thing you know yeah. and it sounds like what it is i mean it's just how to make money forever yeah, infinite yeah. Is forever right yep. so two is going to explain a little bit about that in a bit so you guys got questions um comment them down all right so let's go ahead uh dude so let's talk about this deal you know what is it i mean is it a single family is it you know, yeah this is a single family deal okay so uh, how did you find it? Uh, it's just through networking, uh, and maybe the maybe the person I bought uh, she became like a buddy, a good buddy of mine too. So um, yeah, just through networking. Uh, I think it was David Yang's uh, networking events here in Minnesota. Oh, so you know, I just let people know, hey, uh, you know, we're all investors and uh, stuff like that. So we just meet people and just add each other on Facebook, and you know, just kind of start and you know see what things will go so mm -hmm. yeah it's through networking so i mean that was you're right i mean david just david yang is uh is, is also he's he's a broker now right yeah he's a and, broker. Uh, he used to be an agent when we when i met him and now he's a broker uh he's a broker and a lender he, he's he's growing way faster everything. than us <laughs> <laughs> but you're right he just started a few meetups uh and then i guess you went to that and then yeah. you know like we said like even from the last show Dude, networking is important. You gotta go and just network with people, you yeah. know. And you know, and that's how you found your deal, right? So, yep. um, was it from a mom person? Because yeah, it was one of the uh, uh, mom investors too. Well, she was beginning also. So what happened was that uh, uh, she was, uh, uh, you know, she it's her mom's property, but you know, like her. So she has her own place, but so it's her mom's property and. Uh, you know all the kids are gone now and you know uh it's just the mom that's staying there mm -hmm. so they don't know what to do with it so uh they so they i told her yeah if you don't know what to do with it i i didn't approach it with the idea to actually buy it mm -hmm. i just approached it with the idea of like i'm just like trying to help her and see what her situation is mm -hmm. and then i also get to practice my numbers you know because i was still uh I, I only been i only done like probably two deals at that time I done like a flip and uh, yeah something like that so it's still new too mm -hmm. and so you know then I, f I met her at the house you know i'm like yeah let me just look around and see what the property looks like the condition then maybe i could just let you know what your best uh uh, uh you know your best route is your best option so i went there then you know i gave her different options i'm like yeah if i were to buy it i'm gonna have to buy it at this price because the thing is that she wants to be an investor too and she's starting out so then i told her like this is what the people are going to look at you know uh they're gonna if even whoever is going to come by here to purchase your property mm -hmm. they're going to do the calculation pretty much the same way yeah like you know they look at the arv it's about 180 uh 180 to 200k and then they're going to do 70 percent of that and then they're going to subtract the rehab costs out of that and then they're going to give you the and then they're going to uh, so track all the closing costs all the fees everything like that then they give you the price so mm -hmm. i i walk her through that process like how to do that calculation and how to analyze that deal 
Yeah. Uh, and then I presented her with a few options. I'm like, if people are gonna buy right out, this is what they're probably gonna buy. It. If you don't buy it and you do a, another strategy, even if you don't, even if I don't do it, you could do this yourself. And this is probably the best strategy for you guys uh, if you want to keep the property, right? So I, I kind of explained her. I think I gave like three different options. Um, and then she did it. She said she thanked me and stuff like that. Then we just keep in contact. Yeah. And uh, that first few meetings, uh, we didn't go through with the deal. She she had other people that are in the real estate space too. So yeah. she yeah. So she was talking to her uncle and all that other stuff. So it was like probably like eight months later that you know she messaged me back and said, "Hey, uh, I think we're ready to to move on the deal." Uh, let me know what you Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, because I kept in contact with her, I was just oh, like, okay. like things to her. Right. So the key thing is be consistent, right? I mean, to show yeah. some respect and I guess, I mean, did you, did you make an offer or did you just. Yeah. Uh, at that first meeting I said, if I were to make an offer, this okay. one would offer, like it was like 90,000 or something like that. That's what it come down to. So I was like, yeah, I could make the offer right now. They have all like, this. What is what? What is it? It's it's just a single single house, right? Four four bed, two baths. Four bath, two baths. Yeah, about ninety thousand, like seventeen hundred square feet. Yeah, yeah because the the thing is that the uh, the exterior needs some work. Okay, I mean, some of the interior too, but uh, like it needs like new paint, you know, probably new roof, you know, like there's like trash in the back. Um, so there's some work that needs to be done. Yeah. And so uh, I budgeted about like uh, if if you were to uh, plus the kitchen's kind of small. So if you were to like uh, want to sell it at like market price, you're probably gonna have to spend like forty thousand dollars fixing it. You know. And so I told her that like okay, it's at one eighty. You probably need forty thousand. All the fees and everything like that. People are gonna offer you around ninety thousand. So. Um, so your AR, what, what was your ARV like one thirty? No, it was like one eighty. Wow, one eighty. Yeah, yeah, it was one eighty. Yeah. So ARV, what's the ARV? Just so, just so the uh, the, the ARV, people. Yeah, ARV is the after repair value, right? So okay. uh, pretty much the market value of the property. So after you fix it, how much is it worth? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so you 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 saying hey, if you fix it, it would be one eighty. Yeah. But then you know, after all this, but you you said, "Hey, market value is 90. <laughs> yeah, because like, half, dude. <laughs> yeah, because look at one eighty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I interviewed two vague. As investors, we're buying properties at fifty to sixty percent below yeah. market. That's 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 typically the number. So yeah. I, I told her like at one eighty. If if you do seventy percent of that, you know, because most hard money lenders they lend around seventy percent, so that's how most people calculate it. Um, and so you do seventy percent of that, it's around one thirty, one thirty five, right? Yeah, it's one thirty five, and then you do like forty thousand uh, dollars to uh, of do the repairs. Now you're down at so one thirty five minus forty, that's at ninety five thousand. So if you just do like something like a five thousand dollar fee or something like that, which is more, mm -hmm. but uh, you know I, I I just estimate some of that, then that that goes down to like ninety thousand. Wow. So, so yeah, most people are gonna offer her that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I mean, dude, that's yeah. <laughs> that's ninety thousand. Holy cow! So how did you convince her? I mean, you just kind of lay it out, right? Because you kind of oh. say, hey, roof looks like this, right? Roof is like yeah. 10,000, you know. Uh, no, I, I, I I'm going to get this room. Yeah. Huh? How did you do it? I mean, I mean. Okay. It, it, it gets a little complicated too, but. But I, I mean, I know, I know. I'm just trying to like, um, I'm, I'm kind of pushing here because like. Yes. Because so, we got newbies here, right? So newbies, they kind of want to know like, dude, how, did I, how, can I, how can I get somebody to take 50% off, you know, at yeah. price, right? Yeah. So. so Go ahead. So I didn't buy at 90 because she doesn't want to sell at 90 because they have $85,000 left uh, okay. on the loan. So yeah. if they were to sell it to me, they only made like 5K. Yeah. Right. I think it was around 80 or, or 80,000 or 85,000 or something like that, but they'll make like five to 10K. So they don't want to do that. 
so I told her, well, if you don't want to do that, then this is the, I had to get creative again. And the reason that I, I as you kind of see the theme that how I invest is that I always had to do it creatively. And the reason for that is because I didn't have money to, to start out. Yeah. So I had to go learn all these creative strategies, like to do it with as little or no money uh, because I don't have it, right? So uh, I can't do deals if I, 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 I don't have money. So that's why I had to get creative. So yeah. I told her, hey, if you want to be, uh, since you want to be an investor too, right? Then why don't you just like do this with me? Yo. So yeah, so I <laughs> took partner with her. So, so this was her parents' house, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay, go on. Yeah, well, the moms, uh, and uh, I'll explain the mom in a little bit, but she's sort of the daughter that's helping and taking care of all, manage do all the management for the mom because the dad passed away a while ago already. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then I'm like, okay, if you want more, I already explained to her like. Uh, the fees, I think all the total fees are like probably 11,000 or something like that. Uh, maybe budget was, maybe rehab budget was 35 that I gave her. But so then I told her, look, all these fees, like the reason that I, I have to do 90,000 because of all these fees. So since you want to be an investor too, I'll do all the work. And then basically you get these fees. So then you put up the property and I put up the rehab money to yeah. do the work. Yeah. And and so then that way I didn't I didn't have to take any money out. So no loans or anything like that. So because of there's no loans, I told her this is what we're going to do uh, to her. I'll put up the money to fix it. At this point I just flipped the house so I got like 20 grand now. Uh so I was like I'll put up the money to fix it and uh all you have to do is you put the project you give me the property right? You sign the deed over to me. I'll put up the money to fix it. Once everything's done, I'll refinance it. And I'm going to refinance at 75%. So whatever the refinance is, I'll take my $20,000, my rehab costs out, and then you get the rest. So let's what talk, that? right? So yeah. what strategy was that? A, a partner partnership. No, so, it was a D, a D, oh uh, man, what is it? D, D, you did uh you did oh, 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 oh. it was sort of like a subject to deal subject yeah. to yeah. Is it, yeah was it a subject to deal yeah it's a subject to i yeah. mean you could, it, it's more like a partnership but the way we structure it, it's a subject to yeah but that was yeah so yes go on go ahead yeah so then i, I show her that i'm like look if the market goes up right let's say uh we we refine and after we fix it and it's worth like two hundred thousand. And then I take my 20K out, you're probably gonna make like one 130 total, right? And then you pay that loan back, you're probably gonna make like 30, 40 grand. If the market goes down, right? I mean, if after we fix it, it's not worth 180, you know, I'll guarantee you that other amount, you know? So that minimum, she's gonna make 110 minimum, regardless of what happens. Okay. Yeah, but so she's guaranteed 110. So that means after she subtract like the 85,000 or something like that, I think she made like 15 grand or 20 grand or something like that. Yeah. Right. So that's better than the 5,000 that she would have gotten. And then, uh, but if, if the ARV comes higher, she's probably going to make more. So like that basically is no loss to her. It's a win win. You get some, she yeah. gets some. Yeah. And I don't have to apply for loans or anything like that or, yeah. or the initial loan. Yeah. So, so you lock in, so just to say, you know, is anybody confused? <laughs> is anybody confused? I, yeah. So I think yes, if you guys are confused or say no, if you guys are not, if you guys are getting it, I like to hear, see if anybody's confused. We got a few people on, on this, on this, uh, on this uh, live feed here. Yeah. Just want to see, just want to get a confirmation to see if anybody understand this. I get yeah. it. And I'm like, dude, this is gold right here. You know yeah. what you're telling us because it's like you're really not using a lot of money and you're yeah. not even getting a loan you know this yeah. is just like creating money out of what what Sai kind of tells me kind of creating money out of thin air you know yeah yeah uh uh chan goes he chan goes no so he's not confused okay. anybody else confused if you guys are confused give us a yes we'll go over this again. <laughs> 
if you guys don't get this, this is like uh, gold, man. This is like gold. I mean, I'm probably gonna confuse it more too because <laughs> there's more to the story. <laughs> okay, total following. That's a crazy deal. Oh yeah, uh, check. It's gonna get crazier because that, that's not the end of the deal. That's just the first part. So, so that's like 25 percent of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> we're not like done said, yet bro we're not done yet yeah like okay, i said i had bro. to be creative because i didn't have money so uh, you, you know but but if you're gonna do these deals you need to really know what you're doing and uh you know like i kind of talk it over with zach too so it's, it helps to get a mentor yeah. that has done it and so you know uh, that way as you go you could like structure it properly because you if you messed up on the creative deals like this it's going to be very difficult in terms of your reputation to to invest again because the investment community is very small so yeah so yeah. we didn't had uh see just see vang says okay uh she's an amateur but she is taking a, a lot of notes so yeah so we're not being done with this deal yeah, right so I, I think it gets better from what he's trying to say so, yeah yeah all right you want me to continue yeah let's let's go yeah. i mean um, okay yeah so so then um uh, we structured that deal she gave me the property i put it the rehab cost now i just finished a uh i just finished a flip so i did have the money but in that flip i have two investors that were investing with me so i told them hey do you guys want to be on this deal too and so they put the 20 grand to fix the house <laughs> yeah <laughs> See? oh man Oh, I, I I I I did have the money to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but <laughs> the yeah. key is, you know, other people's money, right? Yeah, because it, I made the investor like thirty three percent on their money on that flip. Yeah. So then I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna pay you thirty three, but you know, I'll pay you fifteen. Do you guys want in on this deal? And they say yes. So they put the twenty grand in. Dude, that's amazing, yeah. dude. That's the key. Okay, so yet those of you guys don't know, like. You want to use other people's money, not your money. And that's kind yeah. of what he's doing, right? The key to real estate is use other people's money. The reason why you buy a house is you, you, you know, you're you using the bank's money to buy the house to make money and then pay it off. And then, you know, it's your house. So that's kind of like what he's doing, right? He's he's asking his friends, do they want to invest with him, right? Yeah. So they're giving him that 20K, which is what he needed anyways. Yeah, yeah. And he was going to throw down. So he's going to keep his 20K. And maybe use yeah. it for a different deal. I, I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. It was for but, other deals. You know, but he's got, so he doesn't have that, he's, he doesn't have that much skin in the game. So yeah. dude, this is awesome. So, so I mean, uh, just to clarify, it only, it only needed 20K to fix up the deal, right? Yeah, because uh, I, I told the uh, the uh, the owner, I was like, if, if, if you want to sell at market rate, because this is, if you want to sell a market rate, you probably need more, like probably like 35 to 40 K because you really need to update everything. But this strategy, we're not going to sell it. We're going to refinance it. So we don't need to, we're going to rent it out. So we don't need to like make everything super nice, you know? So it needed less in rehab. Yeah. So that saved us on the rehab cost. So we knew that we're going to refinance this deal. So this is, this becoming a bird deal, like a buy. Well, in this case, we didn't buy it, but uh i mean we got the property and we're gonna rehab it then we're gonna rent it out and then yeah. we'll, we'll refinance it so yeah I, I my other two investors put the 20k in it took us like uh longer than i expected uh, but it took us two months uh and so we finished everything and then i put a tenant in and so um and then because of that two months i did have to pay my investors the two investors of 15 percent so that's from my own money so the money that I put in is just that, like that interest payment to my yeah. investor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the two investors, they each put like 10K in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I paid them 15%. Um, so I think it was only like $400 or maybe like, yeah, like 500 or something like that for the two months. So that's the money I put in. Yeah. Which I think you can write off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you guys, I mean, uh just i mean i'm not a cpa right but i know that you know when we get a mortgage we write off interest so yeah. if you're borrowing money from people I, can you yeah. if anybody I, knows I did it, 
I did it because this deal is just like 500 bucks and yeah and so yeah i i, I didn't do that you um, do it? okay but all right i think you can at this yeah. point. Yep. so all right so bam you know you gave the money back the key is yeah. just to keep moving money for, forward so all yeah. right so so after that then um we put a renter in but i didn't want to rent i didn't want to just find a regular renter because i just fixed the house up so i didn't want them to mess it up so instead of that i did a lease option on it <laughs> so for for another buyer or buyer <laughs> so i tried to i did a rent to own for a buyer yeah 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 so finally after like uh three three weeks or something on the market i finally found someone and my requirement is like super easy like i only did like five thousand dollars for the option fee yeah so they had to pay me five thousand dollars to have that contract that's part of the option fee so that I cannot sell the property. Yeah. Yeah. So I rent, I did rent to own instead of renting, I did rent to own. So they paid me $5,000 on, on that contract. And then after, uh, and then the monthly payment is 1600 a month. And so since it's a single family, they're paying for all the utilities. And then since they're going to own the property, they're managing the property themselves. So, so in the contract, I'm not managing anything. Yeah. So there's no manager. Clear. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just pay electronically. So, you know, like sometimes I still drive by the house, but I don't need to because they have to manage everything. And so in St. Paul, I do have to pay for the trash. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. basically I get that 5,000 and then I use like, uh, there's some fees and stuff like that, uh, with the refinance. So I use like, I think like 2,500 to refinance. So yeah. after the project was done, you know, I think I banked like two grand or something like that after after the refinance because of the option fee. So I use the option fee to kind of help some pay pay some of the other fees that I, I incur, right? Pay my investors back, you know, do all the refinance paperwork, things like that. Option uh, fee is the five thousand, right? Yep. That you yeah. got from from that lease to own contract, right? Yep. Yep. So you're saying all right, so then you 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 took some of that and, and did what with it? So I took some of that and just pay for like the refinance and stuff like that. There's some okay. refinance charge, like, uh, you know, I think the bulk of it was just the refinance charge and, and like the appraisal and, and stuff like that. I mean, I had the money to pay for it, but I mean, I'm using that money to, to, to pay for the uh, appraisal and, and all that stuff. So, um, so man, that's crazy. So, so it did appraise. So it did a price for 180. I was surprised. We we're actually right on spot. Wow. So, so, so give us the numbers again. Yeah. Let's so it did a price that. after I refinance. So I did all that. Uh -huh. uh, then I refinance it. So the refinance was uh, the ARV. The after repair value was 180. So yeah. they refinanced 75 percent of that. Okay. So then I get like 135. Okay. Then I took the 20K out, gave it back to my investors. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I already paid them the interest. Uh, and then the rest was like, I gave to the owner. Okay. What was, yeah. your, what was your, what was your, um, man, what was your, your cut? Oh, no. The agreement was that I get nothing. I, I get the property. Oh, oh. I get the, the property. property. They get all the refinance profits. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. So, so, so yeah. the, they have like I think like eighty k or something like that. So they ran out with like twenty five thousand or something like that. Okay. Out of the deal. And they didn't do anything. I mean, they they gave me the property. It's it's so see they made like twenty five k on that property. So what what? So if you guys were listening, how much money did you put in on this deal? Um. Well, I gained two grand. <laughs> yeah i mean i mean just I'm, just to, I, just just yeah. to just to get a deal we're not talking about rent yet yeah right? yeah 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 so we're not talking about the rent part yet. how much money did you put in which is zero right yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't put anything in you didn't put anything in yeah if you guys knew that yep. what we're talking here is he threw a few strategies together and then just made it work yep. so 
Dude, that was amazing. I don't know. Did you guys get that? Anybody get that? If you don't, I will go through it again. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a yes if you got it? If you did, say no, man. I mean, yeah, this is yeah. crazy. Let us know if you guys got it. I haven't. I, yeah. I, I haven't heard this deal. I mean, yeah. this is like a this is so it's not like I understand this, dude. I, you just kind of this is the first time I hearing this deal. So yeah. I got so it. I, I don't, if you guys, if you guys didn't get it, let us know. Ask the questions right now because after this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> good point. All right. Yeah. So I, I, the, I mean, I did rent on before because that was my first deal, and you know, it kind of helped me. So I wanted to help other people. You know, like in a way, I wanted to help other people too. You know that maybe they're about ready to purchase but they're not you know quite there so i want to give them some time and i offer them like credit and um because my credit wasn't that great either because i was really bad with money before this before before i actually getting serious about it so you know i had to like kind of repair my credit and all that stuff and so i wanted to help other people like that too so that's why like when i found them i did a rent to own for them and and then in the same way they're helping me because when you do a rent to own the the that person takes care of all the maintenance and all the repairs and stuff mm -hmm. so that you know i don't have to take care of anything so i don't have any maintenance with this property uh yeah. at all so the uh so the rent that you know it's a four bed two bath in a decent area here in st paul so i rent it for 1600 um and of course they pay for everything my uh refinance mortgage 30 year mortgage on it um i think my interest is like five percent or something so uh i end up paying after tax insurance and all that stuff uh it's like uh a thousand like a thousand thirty or something like that so let's yeah. just say 1050 and then i have to pay trash is well uh, like 40 or 50 bucks yeah. so total i'm paying the, all the expense for this property is like 1100 uh total and then uh you know of course it's 1600 that the guys pay the rent yeah. so that's where you get the 500 dollars a month from for this one deal gotcha yeah so, and then you because i don't have money in it you really divide that so how you figure out like rate of return right your roi so return on investment right uh R -O -I, yeah return on investment right you take whatever profits that you make you multiply that with your monthly profit you multiply that by 12. so in this case uh, and then you divide it by the initial money you put in so uh i studied math in college my formal training is math <laughs> so i was a math major uh, yeah. yeah so you take 500 your times 12. uh That's six thousand yeah and then you divide it by the initial amount of money you put in so in this case it's zero so Boom. If, yeah you guys do that math 500 times 12 divided by zero and then that gives you your uh a return on investment uh and my, so my calculus says cannot divide by zero exactly so. that's why it's yeah <laughs> why it's infinite you cannot divide by zero that's why it's an infinite return and it's so just using there you go. that's the infinite few, return a few strategies that he learned um and uh I mean, I wanted I wanted to do this because, like, you know, we have this crisis going on, right? This pandemic, yeah. and uh, we have to get creative, right? Because right now the banks are lending, <clears throat> banks are having a hard time lending because they're probably working on trying to lend business money. Yeah. Uh, some some banks are lending to buy homes, and then, but a lot of them are having a hard time. So there's creative stuff that you can do. Um, and in the group, we are teaching, you know, these these stuff in the mobile real estate uh, investors group. Uh, and two is a perfect example of using these strategies. Uh, yeah. Dude, this is amazing, bro. Yeah. Um, so in this I deal, I think it's subject to or like partnership uh, with a lease option uh, with a, it's a Burr property that involves like, uh, so Burr, B-R-R-R-R, -R -R, uh, a deal that involves a, a subject to or with a partner uh with a lease option with a refinance <laughs> uh i don't think we talk about burr so it's just it's just yeah. a, just define that so uh so at least they they get an idea what that burr is too yeah. so burr is a acronym it's b-r-r-r-r -R -R -R, and it stands for buy 
let's see, buy, rehab, rehab rent, refinance, repeat. So you buy the property, then you rehab it, bring it to market value, then you rent it out, then you refinance it, pretty much pull almost all your money or the perfect bird will be to pull all your money out like in this case. So this is like a perfect bird. Um, and then refinance, refinance all your money back out and then you just do it again because you, you got all your money back already. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a few people got it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Chai got it. Chai. Good name, Chai. Chai. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know this guy. Lee, Lee says, yeah, he, he got the idea of what you, what you're saying. Yeah. Um, Chang goes, yeah, he's got it. Uh, Yang, he's got it. He's got, you know, he's thumbs up. Say, hey, great, you know. Uh, Boo says, hey, thanks for the, the idea, brothers. Much love. Yeah, man, we're just, we're here to help you guys, you know. Yeah. If you didn't get it, let us know. We'll go through it right again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be all night. But if, if you guys go through a, a strategy like this, I mean, you want, just shoot me a message. I, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Yeah, well, or, I'll, I'll, I'll help you look through the your, your numbers and stuff like that. Yeah, and you know, we're like I said, we're you know, we'll the group, you know, I'll we'll, we'll put the group in the in the tag in the in the notes here. Um, uh, two is a good guy. We in a bunch of people in the real estate group are really smart guys. Um, we'll help you guys out, you know, like I said, yeah. us mom people, we're all family, so you know, it's like you helping another mom person out, it's just like you're just helping your other family out, so. Uh, we don't hide in this location. If we got negativity in the group, I'll, I'll kick him out because yeah. Had, so <laughs> exactly. I watch over the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks for watching over it. There's some groups that I joined and the admin doesn't do anything and it sucks. So yeah, thanks yeah. For, thanks for monitoring. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So like like I said, this pandemic is going to bring a lot, a lot, a lot of um, potential deals coming up. So. Uh, it's best that you guys learn them now, right? Yeah. So you can see what's what deals that when they come up, you can kind of go, okay, we can do this and do we do and do this, and be the one of the first few to get these deals. So, um, uh, David, uh, hey, thanks for the info, David. Uh, remember when I was asking about um, like, can you write off uh, oh, yeah. that um, that the money that the interest money? David goes, um, you know. They need to give you a 1098 to deduct on taxes. So, you know, and then there you go. You got a deduction. You Thanks, know. David. I'm going to do that now. So, find the books, find the books, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's actually no. a thousand, right? For you. Yeah, and then the investors, huh? yeah, the, 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 the two investors stayed with me. So, they, they're continuing to make money from me. And yeah, I added, you, yeah. So, because you, uh, you won their trust, right? Yeah, so they know that they're they're gonna get paid by you on maybe on the next deal, you know. Yeah, yep. yep. And how fast was how fast was that uh, how fast was that turnaround? Was it you say it was like a month turnaround? Uh, the rehab was two months, so I think after everything, I think it was like five months. Five months. Yeah, five months for like um, so one hundred bucks per month, pretty much for them, right? Oh yeah, yeah, something like it, that. Yeah, yep. you know that's yeah. crazy, you know. Yep. So um man because their money is not doing anything it's, uh, and so you know they're just like yeah you could borrow and um but it's not that easy uh finding investors so i my i did have to like call like like my very first deal i call like a lot of people so and and, and when i call i just kind of uh explain to them what i'm doing you know yeah and, uh, it's up to them if they want to invest or not i'm just letting them know like this is what I'm doing. These are the deals I'm doing. You guys want to be part of it? You know, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So well, it gets easier after this, right? So you build yourself your reputation up, and then, you know, it gets easier because yeah. now you got a track record, right? Yeah. Right now it's uh, yeah it's it's much easier than like my very first deal, which is not this bird deal. It was like my first flip. It was uh, I have partners on that too, and. Uh, yeah, that that one was that very first one was quite stressful. I have to admit, <laughs> first one was always hard. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, let's see, yeah. Chang goes, "Hey, he's going to be doing a lease option on my house soon." Thanks, guys. Oh yeah, you should. 
<laughs> because you're helping people out. Like, like you know, like my current uh, uh, tenant that I did the lease option to, like right now, rent went up. So I could easily rent that for like 1700 or 1750 right now. But he locked down that rate. So 1600 a month for like three years. So mm -hmm. it's really good on his part too. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so let's go back to that infinite returns. I mean, um, man, so that's 500 bucks a yeah. month and you not putting any money in. I mean, I yeah. was thinking of, uh, there was another way of doing infinite returns, but, uh, I think we'll stick that, uh, you know what? We are kind of running short on time, so let, we'll talk on that on another. There's another term that I don't know if you uh, know Kiyosaki talks about another way of infinite return, but uh, uh, I guess we'll bring that up on a different yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you gotta get Robert Kiyosaki on your show, then you could talk. About <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, he's gonna be like, dude, it's uh, it's gonna be depression down downhill. You know. <laughs> <laughs> save us money and just buy stuff down the road dude yeah yeah I wish, bro yeah, yeah um so we got going on man uh I, I know you have a show right um yeah. that you do like uh yeah. on sunday week, right yeah so, show. tell us yeah. about that yeah so um i didn't have a good name for it so i just named it under my name so it's called the fang real estate show uh yeah. every sunday uh 11 a.m uh central time uh and you know just talk about real estate stuff like you were on there twice uh you know great gave a bunch of great information about real estate um and yeah we've done like 19 shows already so uh, i'm in the process of moving so this next two weeks we're probably not going to do anything but uh in june we're going to come back and i have a few people lined up for it um i have a few older investors lined up for it like because I've been having us young guys on, on here. <laughs> so so get, I'm you, gonna, get your millionaire uh, friend to join it, bro. You know, yeah, who he is. I, oh, who uh, he'll, he'll do it later, but I'll bring okay. some other. Uh, I mean, I mean, all the people that have been investing in real estate, you know, uh, you know, 10, 10 plus years, they're millionaires. So, um, already. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, so I, I'm going to bring a few older people. And at that time, I know that some people wanted us to talk in Hmong. So maybe we'll do a full Hmong show uh, <laughs> at that time. I, I got to do one too, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, man, appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, yeah. We do have one last segment on the show that we do ask is that. Uh, uh, but uh, before that, uh, it's the Fang Real Estate Show. So you could just type down Facebook. Uh, F A N G, my last name, and uh, real estate show, and then YouTube. I post all the live stream on YouTube, so that's uh, you know, on YouTube, just search that to Fang Real Estate Show on YouTube. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'll take all that and I'll put it in the comments of the not comments, but I'll put it on the on the description part of the of so you guys can actually you know click on it and then subscribe because you know his info is. It's dude, this is gold. This is gold, guys. So if you guys learn that those strategies now, dude, wait until like these houses start falling falling apart. You know, like yeah. you can be using these strategies. I'm sure you you got stuff planned already. You know, you know. Give us give us a take. Yeah. What do you think? What's going on? Oh, well, with, with the market. market? Mm -hmm. Oh, the, well, in terms of the real estate stuff, um, I think the bubble is actually at the. I'm a commercial agent, uh, real estate agent too. So I think the the bubble is actually the commercial space because because you know they're doing the same thing in the commercial space like what they did in 2008. Like they did all these commercial loans because it's like interest rate is so low that all these businesses and all, they're borrowing all this money yeah. and then they bundle all the money and then they sell it. It's, I think it's called CMBX or something like that as an index fund. Yeah. Yeah, so all the stock market guys probably know. And and so if we go back to work, so anyway, the fund, uh, the underlying asset for the fund is all these commercial mortgages, right? That's what they did in 2008, but in the residential sector. Yeah. So imagine we go back to work, but your offices, they don't want to go back to work anymore or they don't hire everybody back. So now all these offices or all these retail shops, 
they cannot pay that mortgage. So if they can't pay that mortgage, it trickles back down to that uh, index fund that, that they put on there, that the mortgage is the underlying asset. So mm -hmm. now that, that asset is worthless. So then that's probably going to cause a, a, a that's probably going to cause a, a recession from that that commercial side. And how does it affect like the users, like like you and me, you know? Because that's yeah. going to affect businesses, right? Yeah. So, so you think? So because of that, then of course that affects the banks. So then the banks probably going to. Uh, I mean, some banks are already doing it, like Chase. Um, uh, and so that's going to be more difficult for us uh, in the residential investment space to get a, a, a better long term. And then again, if people are not going back to work, then they might lose their house and uh, all that other stuff. So foreclosures and stuff might be, um, uh, will probably be coming back. I don't think in the residential space, it's gonna be as uh, much, it's not gonna be a big drop like it did in 2008, but it's gonna, the market's gonna go down. Okay. And, and then at that point, we cannot, it's going to be super hard for everybody to get loans, right? So at that point, if you have the ability to get loans, then that's great. If you have the ability to get finance, then that's great. Like right now, I have a few investors, like, uh, you know, that we're trying to work with. I also have investors that I kind of help them, like, find money and stuff like that, which could be a separate topic on its own. But, you know, uh, I'm looking to see where I could find funds, right? Whether it's my money or like people I know that have money, right? And so that when the market does go down, we have the cash available to start purchasing because that's when you could buy for cheap because no one else could get a loan. So if you have some money and you have, if you have money and you have good credit, then you're going to do really good, I think. Hmm. Okay. Gotcha. And what, what's your time frame on this? Like, when does everything go down? Uh, I mean, it's going to follow the, I think it's going to follow the stock market just like it did in 2008. So it's going to be like two years from now. The real estate market is like two years, usually two years behind the real the stock market. Wow. So you're thinking like two years from now, that's when everything goes downhill. For, so, for real estate, yeah. So start planning yep. exit if you get any uh, over leverage stuff, kind of what you're saying. Yeah. Well, like if you have stuff that are on fixed, like, um, well, it depends on where your market is, right? Like in Twin City, the rental market is super strong because, you know, like when I put things for rent, I get like 80 applicants and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I talked to the city council about that. <laughs> and, and anyways, <laughs> you kind of know the dilemma that we're having up here in terms of like rent. Yeah, 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 we know. We know you guys have a problem up there. Yeah. <laughs> But like all my stuff that are on like the 30 year fix, uh, I think that's going to be fine because people are going to rent. So that's not going to be a problem. Uh, if you do have anything that is not on like a nice 30 year fix, I think try to get out of that. Um, and then if you have, uh, you know, I don't do construction stuff, but uh, I wouldn't do new constructions or, or, or stuff like that at this point in time. Uh, and then I, I would uh, try to save, not just save cash, but try to have cash available. So that 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 doesn't just mean like actual cash to me. Like that's not like like the actual paper cash or the cash in the bank, right? That's like your ability to get cash. So like uh, me, I put uh, almost all my savings in my life insurance policy, right? So I could pull that off, like within seven days, I could get that money. Um, and then like, I know like a lot of other people, like, uh, you know, you guys know all the insurance guys that were selling insurance to all the Hmong people. They, if they have like a policy that's like, a, like around five, five plus year old, they probably have some cash value in that. And right now the market is down, they probably getting like the floor uh, returns on that, which is like zero or like 25% return. I mean, 0.25% return. So they're not they're not getting like the 10, 15% returns um, that they used to in their life insurance policy. So you just need to let them know, hey, look, my real estate, you could move some of that funds, you know? So anyways, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm like talking to the insurance guy, the 401k guys, the self-directed IRA guys, 
you know, like um, the people that do just have cash, yeah. you know, the, all, the, all the green farmers in California, like, you know, <laughs> so it's like, you know, so anyways, what I'm doing is that about real estate though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. You gotta so be in the I'm, bank. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just finding like places where people have cash and it doesn't have to be my own, but you know, I just help them to like, because most people have a, a cash in some accounts that they have. They just don't know that they have access to it. So you basically, you're basically, guys, you're basically saying is start networking, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can have stuff avail available. Uh, so networking is key again. Uh, uh, if you start, start to get to know people, you can help them leverage to get some returns, more returns down the road and yep. help you along the way as well. So that's kind of what you're saying, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah. So, all right, let's wrap it up. So, um, uh, let's see. I mean, I know, we, I know I asked you like a while back ago, we did a few, uh, you know, as you were one of our, uh, <clears throat> our, uh, our, our, I guess our hosts or our speakers in the last yeah. one, the but, uh, thing. yeah. You know, if you know, if somebody was to hand you a billion dollars, you know, what's the first thing you would do with it? Oh, the the billion. Oh, that billion. Billion yeah. dollar question. Oh, uh, the know? first thing is that I'm gonna go buy four billion dollars worth of real estate. Boom. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's the first thing. <laughs> why? There's a reason why, right? You know, because yeah. buying it is is one thing, but what's 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 the what's the outcome of it? You know. Yeah. So, I mean, if you have a billion, you know, you, you just buying a $4 billion real estate project that automatically like, like four X the amount of, of money you have. So instantly you four X the amount of money you have. And then the, the, and then you're getting the cash flow, right? And I'm, I'm in the multifamily space. So I, I'm probably going to buy, buy multifamily or maybe some uh, storage and some mobile homes and stuff, but mainly multifamily. And so um, you automatically 4X the amount of money you have just instantly. And then um, the commercial space, the commercial multifamily is uh, done through the cash flow, is evaluated through the cash flow, like the net operating income. So the amount of money that it generates, they don't care about what the next building is worth. So it's not like residential where they look at the next house to see how much it's worth. So, you know, automatically we know that rent most likely, especially in the Twin City area, never goes down. It's like up or stays the same. So if the rent goes up, <laughs> then, you know, you just let it sit for 10 years, that's probably gonna like 10X the amount of money you have. You're probably gonna be worth like 10 billion just by doing nothing for like 10 years. And you're getting cash flow every month at, at the same time, so, bro. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome, and that's that's what us real estate guys does. You know, that's all. You know, this is it. You know, that's that's gold right there. So, yeah. what's the second you second thing you do? Oh, uh, then like <laughs> you mean if you I already, already oh, you already do it all, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one billion already went to the. But yeah, what's the second thing you would do? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of a big fan of Warren Buffett. And so um, his main thing is really to compound. So I would find places to compound it. And then um, that way, if I decide to use it, I mean, he's giving away like Warren Buffett is giving away like 99% of his wealth. So, you know, like later, if I decide to, you know, uh, probably, you know, start foundation, give that away or whatever it is, then, you know, uh, I could give that away. And I, I think like even Warren Buffett doesn't do so much like, uh, philanthropy work or or things like that. He did some, but in comparison to other billionaires, he doesn't do much. And uh, you know, I think the main reason is that he knows that he he could use that money to compound it faster than other people. And so ultimately, like that that end compound interest part, uh, a compound uh, earnings, it's going to help way more people than if he were to like let's say you know in this case if I were to give like half a billion to uh to help something i only use half a billion to buy the property right if i recompound this then you know i could use all the profits and do good with whatever it is right so um that's probably the second thing i'll do and then of course you know we, um, 
real estate, I mean, not us real estate guys are people too. Investors are people. So we care, we have family, we care about family, we care about community members and all that stuff. So, you know, ultimately I think all that money is probably just gonna go back to help the community. The community. Awesome, man. <clears throat> awesome. So yeah, that's it, guys. Uh so how do people get a hold of you? Um mainly on Facebook. So just look up two fang. Yeah. Um and then uh you know the Fang Real Estate Show uh mm -hmm. on Facebook and yeah. YouTube. Uh, and then I am a commercial agent here uh, in uh, St. Paul. So uh, I'm with uh, Metro Metro East uh, Commercial Real Estate. You could just search that Metro East Commercial Real Estate and uh, you could find me on that website. But the fastest and quickest way is just to message me on Facebook. If I don't answer, just message again because, you know, sometimes there's too many messages. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Adam is a friend, guys. Adam is a friend, a contact, you know. Get to know network. This is how yeah. you network. Add yeah. people on Facebook. You know, it's free. So yeah. all right, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um that's it, man. Yeah. Keep holding well, me, guys. Well, thanks for having me. Uh and uh, you know, thank thank you to everybody for uh, you know, your questions and and all your comments. And uh, hopefully you guys learn like one or two things from our discussion here. Um, and then thank again to Chai. I think you're you're helping. I, I know that you helped me personally uh, by doing a lot of your shows and by putting the real estate group together. And, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at if, if, if I didn't have a chance to meet you and all the guys that, you know, you guys uh, uh, are in the group and stuff like that. So uh, thanks again for putting all that together. No worries, bro. Well, like I said, we're all families one way or another by some yeah. uncle or some grandma or whatever it is. So, yeah. All right, guys. Keep hustling, guys. Yep. All right. See you later. See you guys.